Ben 10 originally aired from 2005 to 2008 on Cartoon Network. It was an animated series created by Man of Action about a boy named Ben Tennyson who finds a watch that allows him to transform into 10 different aliens to fight evil and save the world. This was the best show when I was growing up. It did so well that it spawned several sequels, a live action movie, the greatest theme song a western show has ever produced, and of course several video games. Video games are my favourite kind of media, and I remember having the first Ben 10 game on Nintendo DS when I was younger, so I thought I'd revisit the first game, Ben 10 Protector of Earth, on PS2 to see if it holds up today, or to see if I was blinded by nostalgia. Ben 10 Protector of Earth was released on the 30th of October 2007 for the PS2, Wii, PSP and DS. The PS2, Wii and PSP versions of the game are identical, save for a couple differences in graphical quality. While the DS version follows the same story and has similar gameplay while being an entirely 2D game. The game was developed by First Playable Productions and High Voltage Software, and it was published by D3 Publishing. The story of the game is pretty simple. Vilgax uses a drone to steal DNA samples from the Omnitrix so that he can send the Earth into the Null Void. Ben, Gwen and Grandpa then travel across the United States to retrieve the samples while fighting some familiar enemies along the way. You end up fighting a lot of villains from the original TV show, including the Forever Knights, Kevin Eleven, Ghost Freak, Dr. Animo, and obviously Vilgax. It's a good lineup, but where's Zambozo? There's this one moment I found really funny where Grandpa Max says the group should split up in Animo's lab and just sends Gwen off on her own. I didn't see him. He could be anywhere. We'll have to split up. Gwen, you check the main lab. Anyway, after beating certain bosses you find Omnitrix DNA samples which unlock new aliens for you to play as. This is a good idea as it forces you to get used to the playstyle of certain aliens instead of neglecting some to use the ones that you think are cool. However, you unlock all of the available aliens within the first half of the story and you don't unlock any more throughout the rest of the game. And after going through the game to collect DNA samples and restore the Omnitrix, you only get access to 5 aliens. Although Upchuck is unlockable in the DS version through a cheat code, but not in the others. Considering the fact that it's a Ben 10 game, you'd expect to be given access to 10 aliens. While the number of aliens you get access to is disappointing, all 5 aliens actually feel different from one another. For example, Forearms is more of a brawler, Heat Blast is all about area control, and Cannonbolt is more kinetic and moves around the battlefield. Additionally, all of the aliens have unique things that only they can do to traverse the environment and solve puzzles. Forearms can move heavy objects onto pressure plates, Heat Blast can put out fires and glide in the air, Accelerate can use timed pressure plates and run through doors before they close, Cannonbolt can shoot up ramps to reach new areas, and Wildvine can swing from special vines. All the real ones know that the best alien in the entire series is Cannonbolt. Just look at him. And while each alien does feel different, you're just going to end up button mashing your way through the levels, throwing in a combo every now and then to spice it up. The game settles into a very simple loop. A cutscene plays that explains where you are and what you're doing, you walk through a level with some light platforming, you fight a wave of enemies, the game says go, rinse and repeat until you reach the end of the level, which tends to be either a boss fight or a larger wave of enemies. The boss fights here are a mixed bag, but some are quite cool. I particularly like the Vilgax fight, because you have to use all of the unique skills of the aliens you've learned to use throughout the game. And then there are the brawler bosses like Kevin, Hex and Six Six. And then there are the formulaic bosses where you have to hit them a few times, activate something in the environment, hit them, activate something in the environment, so on and so forth until you win. This can get pretty boring, but I will say that the most creative implementation of this in my opinion is during the fight against Ghost Freak. You defeat the bodies that he possesses to force him into the open, and then open curtains to expose him to the sunlight to damage him. It's a very simple beat em up, which makes sense as it's a kid's game, but it's still pretty monotonous. And I'm pretty sure all of the background music is just taken from the show, but somehow it's still pretty bland as the tracks just play one after another without any kind of crossfade, so you just end up running around with dead air in the background, which is pretty disappointing. So overall, there are 23 levels that will take anywhere between 2 and 20 minutes to finish. The number 23 makes you think that the game is really long, but it took me under 4 hours to finish the game without going for full completion. There is extra content including movies, concept art and character models, which are unlocked through collecting all the Sumo Slammer cards in each level and by completing the levels within a certain time limit. Some of the Sumo Slammer cards can only be accessed through the unique abilities of each alien, meaning that you'll have to go through and replay some missions once you have every alien unlocked. But when it comes to the extras, some of the movies you unlock include the transformation sequences from the show, including the aliens you don't get access to in this game, so it just feels like a kick in the teeth. 
After playing through this game, I can say with 100% certainty that it does not hold up after all this time. The models in the cutscenes look really janky, the gameplay is repetitive, and the game just feels cheap in general. There are certain areas of the game where I fell through the level and died, and there were times during the platforming segments where I thought I wouldn't make a jump, but I just clipped through the platform and make it because the game wanted me to. In short bursts, I'm sure this game is just fine, but if you're consistently playing it, you're probably going to end up getting bored at some point. I'm tempted to go and look at the other Ben 10 games to see how well they held up. The only other games I've played in the series are Alien Force for DS and Wii, and Vilgax Attacks for DS, so everything else will be an entirely new experience for me. But it's just a shame that nothing will ever top the opening of the original show.